on my break off from the weak minds They can stay soft You can change lives You create thoughts Never waste time You got one shot You got one life Better pop off What do you like? Make a dream job No 9-5 No mean boss Just my life And free thoughts So mm -hmm. Cody Who is your number four team In the NFC West? What is their record and why? I think it's no surprise here that the number four team is going to be the Seattle Seahawks. I can't even joke about who the last place team is. It's kind of a foregone conclusion. I have them with a record of four and 13. I don't know if there's much to say about them. I mean, you have Geno Smith or you have Drew Locke as your potential starting quarterbacks. You don't have a really good offensive line. Your defense has suffered quite a, quite a big deal over the last few years. And, you know, some would say they're in a complete rebuild mode, which then begs the question, you know, how long is Pete Carroll going to be there? But in my opinion, this team, no better than four wins, and they're all within division. I don't see them. I mean, maybe a win against the Giants, which I have projected here, but, you know, give or take, maybe they don't. But, again, Seattle Seahawks, fourth place at 4-13. Four and 13. Yeah, not much to say. Um, I have them in fourth place. I actually liked them a little better. Um, I, I have them at 6-11, and 11, and the reason I do is because there have been – we have seen Drew Locke up close and personal. Is he a great quarterback? By all means, no. Mm -hmm. uh, but he's actually pretty decent. Uh, he he gets some good games here and there. Um, yes, he has a bad offensive line, but he actually, I feel like, he has a few more, in my opinion, talented weapons than what he had in Denver. I think he's had um, guys who – he's coming in with guys who have experience, who've had success before, um, and guys who are not really injury-prone type players. Um, you know, you get Noah Fant with Drew Locke, um, so there's already a connection there. Uh, you have DK Metcalf who, you know, you and I aren't very high on, but he is a guy who can have a big play here and there. Mm -hmm. And Drew Locke has a very strong arm. He could get it to him. Uh, is he accurate all the time? No, but I'm sure there would be some games where he's just going to surprise the hell out of you. Yeah. Um, and then Tyler Lockett. I mean, the guy has been underrated his whole career. A lot of people say he was uh, talented only because he had Russell Wilson as their quarterback. But I've been hearing uh, a lot of people aren't as high on Russell Wilson as they absolutely should be. So right. if that's the case, we're going to uh, we're going to see a a uh, really low end Seahawks team. But I don't believe that. I think Tyler Lockett is actually pretty talented. I think he's a guy who um, is one of the shorter receivers who can play outside receiver, which mm -hmm. is incredible. So. I, I think this is actually uh, somewhat of a talented team. You know, obviously they're going to miss Chris Carson, but um, Dallas had some nice runs uh, here and there. Rashard Penny was starting to kind of get into a groove last year. So mm -hmm. I, I like this Seahawks team. I don't think their defense is as bad as what everyone is saying. I mean, of course they're not great, but I don't think they're the worst defense in the league right now. Um, and I think they're going to get a few wins against the – or a win against the 49ers – I think they could uh, pull off a win over the Cardinals at least once. And then I see, you know, Atlanta, Carolina, Giants, Jets, all possible wins for for the Seahawks. It could go either way. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, yeah, I have them at 6-11. and 11. Oh, well, you have them. Not, not bad. I'm surprised for six wins. But, you know, like you mentioned, they can surprise the people. So, who knows? Yeah. Yeah. I, I agree. <laughs> All right, well, then I'm going to move on then to my number three. I have the Arizona Cardinals at 6-11, and 11, third place. I think... Um, Whoa. Yes. Well, here's why. I'm not a fan of their defense. I mean, yes, they have J.J. Watt. Obviously. Wow. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of uh, Cliff Kingsbury. Um, Kyler Murray, I think, has some growing pains to do. I think giving him a contract extension is fine. I just don't think that he has the right coach in place. I think that there is a lot of distraction with... Obviously, the news of his contract having that, you know, he's required to study for four hours. And uh, obviously, too, having uh, DeAndre Hopkins not available for the first six weeks, I think, is a big deal. Your second talented receiver is A.J. Green and you have John Brown, which Hollywood Brown still has a lot to prove. So maybe he can. I just don't know if, uh, you know, if the Cardinals can pull it together. I just see this as like a regression type of year because I forecast a head coaching change next season. I don't I don't think uh, Kingsbury lasts after this season, especially if they don't even make the playoffs. But in my opinion, they're two of the best teams in the NFC are in this division. So I don't know how the Cardinals are going to sneak in to begin with, but I don't have them very high. I just think this team is kind of is full of drama and I just don't see it being a productive year for them. And like I mentioned, it's going to be a regime change in my opinion. 
Um, I don't necessarily disagree with you in the fact of Cliff Kingsbury could possibly be let go after this year. Mm -hmm. Um, honestly, I felt like that could possibly happen after the playoff game that they had. I mean, I know Kyler Murray had a really bad playoff game, but you know, Cliff Cliff Kingsbury and, and to the credit of, uh, the vaccine podcast where, you know, our friends over there, when we were talking about the Cardinals, they -hmm. were talking a little bit about Cliff Kingsbury. And, and I believe it was Ethan who brought up that, you know, Kingsbury kind of dives off at the end of the, like, like the first half, they look really good, and then towards the second half, they just start tanking. Now, yeah, I think that that's still going to happen, but I also do believe that DeAndre Hopkins coming back for a majority of the second half of the season, as long as he stays healthy, of course, um, that could actually help him out really well. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, James Conner is coming back. Uh, you added that they, they got Marquise Brown, they have AJ green and then of course D hop. So there's, there's some good, uh, some good receivers that Kyler Murray has. And as much as I, you know, dumped on Kyler Murray for the, for the, um, offensive performance he had in the playoffs, mm-hmm. I do think at least regular season wise, he is very good. Um, he knows how to run, he can pass. So. I, w- I would have to kind of disagree with you on that one, but I have the 49ers at three at eight and nine. Wow. Um, I, I like the Niners, but there's a lot of conflicting stories about Trey Lance. Mm-hmm. Um, and basically the overall consensus is Trey Lance is not consistent enough. He's a guy who looks like he could possibly maybe get 60% of his passes completed, which mm-hmm. in the NFL today is not great. You kind of want to be in the 65 percentage range, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> a.k.a. Derek Carr. Anyway, um, <laughs> Agreed. so I, I'm a little worried about Trey Lance because also he really hasn't played in two years. He didn't play during the COVID year, which was his senior year. He got drafted, was the backup for uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. He saw a little action here and there, but a lot of it was more running plays. And there was a big throw he had in preseason that looked really good. And then he had a really lazy dump off like uh, screen pass where he almost overthrew the tight end. I mean, well, he did. And the mm-hmm. tight end was able to go and get it. So, um yeah, I just I, I just really believe that uh, it's a little too inconsistent. I think their defense is good. I don't think it's as good as what everyone hypes it up to be, to be perfectly honest. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, um, I, I'm sorry, I completely blanked. And I think Debo Samuel, he's a guy who gets injured a lot. I Him getting that big contract is actually a little worrisome for me. I'm mm-hmm. glad he got it. He deserved it. But if I'm the organization, I'm a little nervous about giving a lot of that money to Debo Samuel, who has had a history of being injured every single year. Mm -hmm. So uh, that makes me a little nervous. And then, of course, George Kittle, he's a guy who gets hurt a lot. So with him out of the offense, that hurts. They're saying Brandon Ayuk looks great. Great. But uh, you got to. Again, you gotta you gotta have a lot of guys healthy uh, to finish off the year. So I just don't think the Niners are there yet, but I think they're going to be a tough team nonetheless. I think Kyle Shanahan's offense is that good, and I think their defense is is good enough to win games. I just don't think it's a, like a top five defense. Okay, well I'm I'm more shocked about that than I think you are about the Cardinals one. Um, so I'll just move right along then because number two, I actually have. Uh, San Francisco 49ers in second place, but I have them actually with a 12 and five record. Um, they have a very favorable schedule. <laughs> they have a very favorable schedule. Again, I think their defense is much improved. It was injured, injured last season. I think it kind of gets healthier this season. Um, I actually think that Trey Lance will be a little bit more successful than people are giving him credit for. I know there's conflicting reports, but I think that his mobility really changes the, the, dy- the <laughs> dynamic of this offense. Because just moving the pocket to where he's now a run threat draws in a linebacker can then open up, you know, uh, Kittle for some sort of a, a throw right there. Debo Samuel keeping a play alive. Brandon Ayuk, who has really good speed and who, you know, could continuously have the play develop if Trey Lance moves out of the pocket. I really do think that Kyle Shanahan's offense is an offense that is quarterback friendly no matter who it is. I mean, you know, he it was successful with Matt Ryan, successful with Jimmy Garoppolo. I think it'll be successful with Trey Lance. Um, 
I just think that San Francisco, they're a team that is going to surprise a lot of people in the NFC. So I do have them high, probably a lot higher than most people, but I just think that there's a lot more going for them in terms of defense. And I think their offense is going to be a lot more explosive than with Jimmy Garoppolo. I think the Trey Lance experiment experiment is going to look a little different. We're going to have growing pains where we have turnovers, but I think Kyle Shanahan will accept those, those, those daring throws, those, um, you know, being a um, being a gunslinger in a sense, just because I think the reward will pay off more than the punishment, uh, so to speak. So I, I think that Trey Lance will have some success in this offense. And I think 49ers are actually going to surprise a lot of people. I actually see them tying uh, for the West at top. And obviously we'll get to our um, our top team shortly, but I have the 49ers pretty high. I just think that this team is, is due for a surprise in the NFC. And plus, the NFC is extremely weak. And so, you know, what's more likely, if San Francisco winning 12 games or another NFC team that is poorly constructed winning in, winning 12 games in in the NFC? So anyways, that's, that's overall what I think of the 49ers this season. Wow. I'm a little shocked by that. <clears throat> I, I mean, listen, I... I, I it's a it's a what if with with Trey Lance, so that's why I gave him. But I I mean I'm kind of looking at their schedule right now. I only see like five real like layups for the Niners, and mm-hmm. that's kind of being I think a little generous towards uh, the Niners. But it's like they face like the first two weeks it's Bears and Seahawks. Okay, that's that's a good start. Then you got Broncos, Rams, and then you have the Panthers. <laughs> Uh-huh. Which I mean again, not not great for um for either or for the um for the Panthers, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Oh man, my screen just went away. And then Sorry you have Atlanta that. to follow. Yeah. And so Atlanta and then so you, it's just like two two like pretty easy games, then you go two tough games, and then two easy yeah. games, then you go two tough games. And then after kind of talking about all that the Niners kind of seem like they got a really tough schedule the rest of the way there's, they sprinkle in like, you know, the commanders uh, in there like later in the year, but it's like, like you said, the Panthers Falcons, and then it's chiefs Rams and they have a bye week. Then they face the chargers and then you got Cardinals and then Mm -hmm. saints and dolphins. And I'm not as high on the saints as you are, but I can see why a lot of people are high on the saints. So that's not a layup. Uh, mm-hmm. Then you got Buccaneers, and then yeah, you have the Seahawks and Commanders. But then you finish off with the Raiders and a divisional rival with the Cardinals. That's a tough schedule, in my opinion. That's really tough. That's going to be uh, a lot of games that I could see them lose, and I could see them winning uh, at least five games. But um, you know, I gave them eight just because I think their defense will win them some games. I mean, no doubt. I get it. Like it is a stretch. Don't get me wrong. When I was doing this and I came up with 12 wins and again, only five losses, I think is the more glaring part. I looked at the schedule. and I mean, I think San Francisco is a stronger team than people give it credit for. I mean, I have them splitting games with everyone in their division just out of fairness so that they're three and three. And I think, you know, are they going to beat Chicago? Yep. Are they going to beat Carolina? I think so. Are they going to beat Atlanta? I think so. That's three additional wins right there, and they haven't had any new losses after that. Will they lose maybe tough games along the way? Yeah, because I have them losing to KC. I have them losing to the Raiders, and again, does that add a complete bias? I'm going to be honest about that. But I do have them winning against like New Orleans because we don't know what New Orleans is going to look like towards the end of the season. You know, Miami, what are they going to look like at the end of the season? And that's actually a home game in San Francisco. San Francisco is not an easy place to play at especially when the 49ers have a lot of momentum on their side. So, you know, taking that all into consideration, I think their schedule is a little bit more favorable just because I think that they will win tough games and I think that they will win the games that they're supposed to. And, you know, with a, with a good enough momentum, they can probably take, they can probably take a game against Tom Brady. Cause for some reason, the Buccaneers always seem to lose some weird game towards the end of the season when they have a playoff position secured. So, taking all that into consideration in my evaluation of them. So, Well, I'll go with my number two. Obviously, I have the Arizona Cardinals. Um, I have them at 11-6, so I have them flip-flop from what you have them. 
Listen, I, I'm I'm with you on the defensive side. I don't think they got much better. Uh, obviously, losing Chandler Jones is not great. Uh, they do still have J.J. Watt, but he's an injury-prone guy. But mm-hmm. overall, I think their defense has actually done pretty well for having, you know, J.J. Watt as kind of their anchor on their defense. So um, I feel like they're, they're a pretty decent defense. I can see them losing games in shootouts because of the defense. Um, but I also can see them winning games because of their offense. I mean, you look at Kyler Murray, you look at James Conner, you look at DeAndre Hopkins. Yes, he's missing the first six games, but, you know, the first six games is Chiefs Raiders, who I think they will lose to automatically, and then Rams. Mm-hmm. So you got an 0-3 start, but then you go Panthers. I think an Eagles game is, is a winnable game for the Cardinals, and then Seahawks. So they could potentially go... Two, uh, in my opinion, I think you could make an argument they could go two and three in there. Mm-hmm. Or, uh, excuse me, that didn't make sense. Two and four, excuse me. And them still be okay. I could see them go three and three and them still be okay. So I'm not going to panic about the, the first six games. Um, I do feel like they have an easier stretch kind of towards the end. Uh, after their bye week, they have the Patriots, which I think is a very, I think they're going to win that game. Then mm-hmm. they face the Broncos. It's in Denver. I think that's going to be a loss. But then they played Tampa Bay in Arizona. That game, exactly what you're saying, that game could go either way. Because like you said, Tom Brady, they lose these weird games. That mm-hmm. could be one of them. I actually have Tampa Bay winning that game. Um, oh, excuse me. I have Arizona winning this game because of it being in Arizona. I was a little... Uh, unsure about that and then Mm -hmm. they play in atlanta but i think uh they should be able to handle the falcons well and then they play in san francisco which that game could go either way i have the niners winning that one Mm -hmm. but um overall they could go what four and one in my opinion uh or at least three and two in the last stretch and and still make a playoff game so yeah I don't know. I just I I do think that with their team, with their offense, I like their offense a little bit better than the 49ers just because of the quarterback situation. Like I said, I like Kyler Murray. Yes, I saw mm-hmm. the playoff game, but I've also seen him in the regular season. He's a good regular season quarterback. Um, so um, and he's not going to be facing the Rams defense <laughs> every single week. No. So uh, that'll help him a little bit. But I don't know, man. This I mean, I, I'm I should say that I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if they did go six and eleven, just because the whole Kyler Murray thing and this whole off season could be a huge distraction. Yeah, the last, I mean, we have to go off of what recently we've seen, which wasn't good at all. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was dumping on Kyler Murray, saying like, I'm surprised you should not have the gall to say, oh yeah, I need a contract extension after the crap that you put out in the playoff. Like right. your focus should be like, nah, you know what? I need to prove myself because obviously I'm not there yet. So um, I did lose a lot of respect for Kyler Murray this off season, but mm-hmm. what I have to admit, he is a good player. Um, yeah. I can't say he's not. So um, I, I'm going to give the Cardinals the benefit of the doubt because they didn't lose a ton other than like Chandler Jones, which is pretty big. Um, but I do think that they're still a, a pretty strong team in the NFC. And like you said, NFC isn't that strong. So uh, yeah. they could squeak out a few games that maybe some people wouldn't think that they could win. So Yeah, no doubt. All right, Cody, who's your number? Well, we know who your number one yeah. is, but why? I'll clean it up. It's going to be the LA Rams. I have them also tying with the 49ers in a 12-5 and five record. I'm not a mathematician. I have no idea how the tiebreaker is going to work. I just have them finishing in first place. That's all you guys need to know about. Um, I just... <laughs> You know, just like what I predicted last year with the Rams when I had them, I don't know if I, I can't remember. I think I had them winning the division last year as well. And I even said, you know, with Matthew Stafford, don't be surprised that they're a Super Bowl contending team. Sure enough, they won the Super Bowl. But I really like this team. I think that they've actually improved uh, a great deal offensively. I really do believe that having Allen Robinson essentially replace um, Robert Woods is a huge upgrade. A lot of people, a lot of people underrate Allen Robinson and, at one point before uh, Justin Fields and Matt Nagy's last season, Allen Robinson was considered a quarterback-proof a wide receiver, and he had Mitchell Trubisky. I think at one point he had Nick Foles throwing to him, and he was still you know, not only relevant in the NFL, but fantasy relevant as well. I see that being a huge upgrade for them from Robert uh, Woods. Like I mentioned, Cam Akers comes back. I really do like the offensive line the Rams have. I think it, they could have done a little bit more in free agency, but 
you know, all things considered, they paid out a lot of money to their guys to keep them on there, especially Aaron Donald in that defense. I think that's huge. Um, you know, Jalen Ramsey is probably the number one shutdown corner in the NFL right now. Will he give up some? Sure. But do you want him on your defense at the end of the day? Absolutely. And again, with Sean McVay and and uh, Matthew Stafford on this team, they are magic. In my opinion, like this is what Sean McVay envisioned when he came to the Rams. I think the reason why it didn't work with uh, Jared Goff is because Jared Goff just wasn't that quarterback that really was able to lead like Matthew Stafford is. And I think Matthew Stafford and Sean McVay is like a perfect quarterback coach marriage. And I think that this will continue to reap some benefits. Will they repeat? I don't know. I'm, I don't, I think I'm on the fence of like, I don't think they'll repeat. I think there's a lot of question marks about that part of it, but will they absolutely win this division? I think so. I think they're the most complete team in this division. And I think argument could be made outside of the Buccaneers. They're the second favorite NFC team in this conference. So Again, I have the Rams 12 and 5 to, to round out the NFC West. So I'm going to preface it by this. I too have the Rams. This was before I heard about Matthew Stafford's injury. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Would you have him 17 and 0? <laughs> 17 and no, I have him at 15 and 2. Wow. So okay. I, I had them splitting games against Arizona and San Francisco. Mm-hmm. Now the Bills game could kind of go either way for me. At first, I thought, you know, it's in LA. It's going to be against the Buffalo Bills. They came off of the Super Bowl win. Um, I am, I am with you. I feel like they got better, not only with um, Allen Robinson replacing Robert Woods, but even without OBJ, I think they have gotten better just team chemistry-wise. Defensively, mm-hmm. I feel like they're pretty much the same. Yeah, they lost Von Miller, but I feel like Von Miller kind of got a second uh, half resurgence because he was traded over there. So, yeah. you know, I, I just feel like the Rams – we're going to win that game. Now with Matthew Stafford, it does make me put into question a little bit because I do like that Bills defense a lot. But I'm going to stick with my prediction. I'm going to go with 15-2. and two. I know it's probably wrong. The Rams are going to lose early games. They'll probably lose, you know, the Cowboys game, which will be everyone will freak out. They'll probably be like, oh, my gosh, Dallas is back. They're the best team in the NFC. Oh, blah, blah, blah. You know that's going to happen. It's going to, yeah. Yeah. I had them actually beating Tampa Bay. But, again, now that – now it's it's two weeks after their bye week. So – and they're going to be facing the Niners, which the Niners are always a tough out for the, for the Rams. So mm-hmm. that one could kind of go either way as well. Um, but I, I feel like now after, after that, now looking at the 49ers and then it's Buccaneers in Tampa, I feel like they could lose that game. So I can, I could see how they would go like 13 and four, but I mm-hmm. don't think they're going to drop lower than that. And the reason is I just think they're overall a better team. Um, yeah. even with, with Stafford being hurt or whether he's fine and you know, it's, they're making a story out of nothing, which is very possible. Mm-hmm. Um, I do feel like. Overall, if you plug and play in another quarterback, Sean McVay is going to make it work. I mean, you got Allen Robinson. He's yeah. going to make sure he gets the, Allen Robinson the ball a few more times. Cooper mm-hmm. Cup, one of the best route runners in, in the league right now. Um, you know, Cam Akers, I, I'm very high on, as, as we had talked about before. So, you know, this is a really complete defense. And then when you have, you know, Aaron freaking Donald still, uh, you know, everyone was like, is he going to retire? I Mm -hmm. never thought he was going to retire. I thought he was going to keep playing and uh, he's going to show you like, oh, y'all thought I was going to retire, huh? (laughs) We're going to we're going to see how the uh, how the MVP vote goes. So I just think that the Rams are very strong. I'm going 15 and two, but I know I'm probably going to be wrong on this one, but I'm going to stick with it. So. Well, and also, yeah, my dog. (laughs) Anyways, also, do not forget, too, and I actually am just looking at their roster right now. I forgot that they actually added Bobby Wagner. So, oh, I forget. Oh, my God. How did I forget? So, just to, you know, even make it even scarier, I think now that that. Who? Yeah, that uh, 15 and 2 prediction probably is a lot closer than people think now. So. Anyway, so yeah, <laughs> just a quick recap on our NFC West. I have the uh, Seattle Seahawks in fourth place at four and thirteen, Arizona Cardinals in third place at six and eleven, San Francisco 49ers second place, twelve and five, 
LA Rams first place at 12 and five as well. Drew. All wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, know I that. have, I have the Seahawks at fourth place at six and 11. I have the uh, San Francisco 49ers in third with eight and nine record. I have the Arizona Cardinals in second with an 11 and six record. And then I have the Los Angeles Rams rounding out the top of the NFC West at 15 and two. I actually, fun fact, to have them at the number one seed in the NFC. So 